All right, Shalom, Makim, Shalom, and Yabashmael Shai broke a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little and sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh and double honors to the apostles over there at Great Millstone. All right, man, the title of this one's going to be Can You Go Into the Lustful Demon? I've been dealing with that. And I get that title from a comment that uh, a brother left on my page, Only the Sheep 144. He left a comment asking me if I could go into the, the lustful demon. So that's what we're going to do this day. We're going to talk about the lustful demon. Now, as you can see, I got this picture right here. You know, it was, it was, you know I thought it was pretty, pretty um, fitting. But nonetheless, I want to talk about how the lustful demon just isn't woman. Because when you, when, you, um, when you think about lust, all you think about sex and women and, you know, things of, in a sexual nature. Now, lust... As we're going to go in, go in and further, is your desires, your appetites. All right? So the brother says, um, only for the sheep 144. This is a month ago. I'm a little late, but nonetheless, all praises, I was able to get to it now. But he says, Thwata Ak, by the way, I was wondering if you could go into a lesson or a prayer about a lustful demon. Because that's something I've been dealing with for a minute. I don't want it. I don't want it to hold me back from the spirit or the ministry. Shalom. Which, hey, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemal Shai, I pray that, that that brother isn't held back by his lust that's making him be separated from the Heavenly Father. But that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go into that lust. And my open scripture for the brother is that um, Sirach the, the second chapter, I call that the, uh, that's like the, the entry chapter or the chapter of the chapter for all the newcomers. That's like one of the first chapters you want to instill in your head. Because as soon as the chapter open up, as we finna read, Sirach 2 and 1, it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So when you come to the truth, it ain't just a walk in the park, it's not pieces and cream. You know, you're gonna actually receive discipline. You're going to go through some things. And you're going to be tempted by the tempter. Who is the tempter? The tempter is Satan. All right? Satan is going to tempt you. Okay? So, the scripture told you, Hey, my son, when I come to serve you, I prepare thy soul for temptation. So, you got to prepare your mind to fight. You know? This thing is a fight. The truth is a fight. So, you find out that one of the many battles that you're going to be fighting is your lust. You see? So, when you're dealing with the lustful demon, be ready to fight. Be ready to fight that demon. All right? So, the first thing I did do was look up the word lust. When you look up the word lust, it, in the etymology, it says desire, appetite, inclination, pleasure, sensual appetite. And that's exactly what lust is. It's a play on your emotions, your appetite, the things that you like, your desires and your pleasures. That's what it is. And what happens is that um, the demons try to use your lust against you to go so that you will go against the Heavenly Father or that you will lose your faith. See, what, what Satan is going to do with the demons, he's going to take away the pleasures from you. It didn't tempt you with the same pleasures that he took. So he'll make it to where um, you can't get no woman. Just say this is one scenario. he make it to where you can't get no woman. But the woman that he do try to, uh, uh, Satan would try to put on you, is a woman that has a husband. See? So he have it to where he block all the women to wanting to talk to you, but... He'll make that woman with the husband try to talk to you. And that and that and, and he'll be playing off your lust. And that's just one amongst many. There's more than it could be you giving more time to your job. Because hey, you may got a job that you like. You love doing that work. You know, that's a pleasure to you. Whatever you do. And but if you putting that job or you putting anything over the Heavenly Father, it then become uh, it becomes into a, it becomes negative for you. It could be anything though. You know, not just a job. I thought that, that that's you know, not just jobs, but anything, man. Just think of anything. 
So the next precept we have here is um, Sirach 18 and 30. It says, go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thy appetites. So we just read in the in the um, etymology for lust, it said desire, and then the second definition was appetite. That's why I thought of this precept. It says, go not after thy lusts, and frame, reframe thyself from the appetites. So that's a that's like a that's a, it's a um that's like a warning for you and it's a uh, a motivation to you. Like don't 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 indulge yourself in the things that, that you that you pleasure in. Don't indulge yourself in the things that you pleasure in if they go against the Heavenly Father. If the things that you're pleasuring into if it go against the Heavenly Father, you don't you can't find the balance in it, it's best to leave it alone until you find figure out the balance of it. So when you refrain yourself from your lust and your appetites, it says, and if thou give thy soul to the desires that please her, meaning that you give your soul, you give yourself over to your wants, your desires, your lust, it says, she should make thee a laughing stock to thy enemies which malign thee. And the word malign means to undermine. So if you do want to be given into your lust, your pleasures, your wants, what happens is that, um, and if, if, if you give in to them and, they're, and, and you're going against the Heavenly Father, what's happening is that you make yourself a laughing stock. The demons are laughing at you because they got you. Satan is laughing at you because he got you. The separate claim white man, he's laughing at you because he got you. See this separate claim white man, his society, the whole United States, his whole kingdom is based at the lust and pleasures. So that's the reason why us brothers deal with lust and pleasures because it's everywhere. You're looking at a commercial, it's lust and pleasure there. Lust and pleasure for food and women. Lust and pleasure to go party. You know, different things like that, man. Lust and pleasure to get high. So we, we have all these things bombarding us all the time. But we gotta, if you give yourself over to them, then you make yourself a laughing stock. The spiritual demon, Satan and the demons is laughing and Esau Edom is laughing because Esau Edom threw them traps out there for you to get trapped in. All right? So what we do is that we, we, we you gotta have that discipline. You gotta have that temperance over your body. You, have, you gotta have self-control. And you don't just get self-control by just standing there or just walking around and doing nothing. No, you get self-control by practicing it and first praying for it. You got to pray against your lusts and your desires. You know? Because what happens is that when you read in Isaiah 59 and 15, you spiritually put yourself out there. So when you read Isaiah 59 and 15, it says, Yea, truth felleth. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. So what happens is that you separate it from this world. You're trying to serve the Lord. Well, you made yourself a prey to the, to the demons, to Satan. You made yourself a prey to Esau's society. So but, well, how are they going to get you, to get you back into the world, to try to get you to turn away from the Heavenly Father and go back into, your, into the world? What they're gonna, what the, the demons gonna do is, and with Satan, they're gonna put all different type of things that you personally like in, in your face. You know, it's gonna be everything that you personally like. It's gonna be tailor made, being thrown in your face. It's just your feet happen to be there at the right time, to to for this demon to mess with you. You know, you're gonna just happen to be there at the right time. For this woman to try to commit a adultery with you. You know? You're gonna happen to be there at the right time for, for whatever lust to overtake you. It just it just that's what the demons they try to set you up. You know? And like I, I said a little earlier in the spirit, they deprive you, and then they try to throw that same depravity in your face, but now it's turned into wickedness. So you got to be beware of that. You got to be beware. You know, you got to pray to the Heavenly Father all the time and 
And um, one of the other tools we have, if your lust is that serious, if it's on some other stuff, you're going to have to fast to get that demon off you. You know? You're going to have to afflict your soul so that that demon can flee from you. You know, brethren, levels of lust is different, but nonetheless, um, we all in the same fight and we all dealing with the same things. Now, I got this picture here. It says, demons in your mind. When your mind becomes your biggest enemy. You see, your mind is your biggest enemy, man. That's where out of the, the out of the out of the heart, or the scripture say out of the tongue, or no no no, the scripture say out of the heart is the is the um, issues of life and death. You know, and then out of the tongue, I think well maybe I'm getting a little confused. I'm sorry, but out of the tongue cometh life and death, or maybe out of the mind. And I'll slap it up there if, if anything, or maybe I'm mixing two scriptures. But nonetheless, man, we are worse enemies. You know, and, and the things that we lust after, each, you know, Satan is using them against us. So you know that you in a war like this, knowing that you in a war like this, you got to know how to fight. You see, he ain't fighting fair. Well, you got to figure out how to move around East, uh, the Satan not fighting fair. Satan using Esau to make your lust shoot out the roof. Now, Paul explains it. He says in... Um, Romans 4, 7 and 14. Because remember, Paul was dealing with the same lust. You know, all our forefathers was dealing with the same lust. Even Yahweh Shai, he was dealing with the same lust. But see, Yahweh Shai never sinned. But all the rest of our forefathers did. So yeah, man, we all dealing with the same things. And Paul explains it in Romans 7 and 14. It says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And when I read that scripture, I was, I was like, man, let me see what the NLT say. Now, li listen to what the NLT say. It says, so the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am to, if I am all too human, a slave to sin. So you, 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 you kind of understand that the bodies that we are in, these flesh, these chains of darkness, man, that, them things are fighting against our spirits. They're fighting against um, the goodness we want to show Yahweh Shemel Shai. You see? So we're so we're slaves to sin. We're slaves to these things like lust. But now, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai, what does it say in Philippians? What is that, 4 and 13? I could do all things through Yahweh Shai, which strengthens me. Now we got the Lord to, to, to combat these, these this fight. The fight within your own mind. Verse 15 says, For they, it says, For that which I do, I allow not, and what I would, that I do not, but what I hate, that I do. You see? So you're going to find yourself that the righteousness you want to perform for the Lord, you want to do a lesson, you want to make sure you're on point with this, you want to be giving your tithes, you want to be praying, you want to be fasting, you want to do all this goodness for the Lord, you'll find yourself not doing none of those things or having trouble doing those things. But then uh, to sit up and not do no lessons, sit up and watch a movie and, you know, just go to sleep on a movie and, or to sleep with, to, to sleep around with um, these women or eat those, all those different things that you, you, you don't want to do. You'll find yourself doing them. You know, because it's easier to do, it's easier to be lazy, it's easier to give in to your lust, it's easy to do that, but it's hard to, 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 to keep yourself righteous, it's hard to keep yourself righteous, I got a saying I wrote down, it goes, it's easy to die, but it's harder to live, it's easy to get put, death, get put to death because you did the wrong thing, but it's harder to live. It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take um, consistency to live. You're going to have to show forth a pattern of good works, and it's not easy. So Paul explained, the things I don't want to do, I'm doing those things. And the things I do want to do, I'm not doing them. And that's why the scriptures say this. In Romans 14 and 22, it says, Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before the heavenly Father. Happy is he, happy is he that condemneth not himself in the things which he allow. 
So knowing you in these chains of darkness, knowing that you subjected to doing something evil and wicked, you got to be paying attention to what you even doing, period. You better make sure you're not committing adultery. You better make sure you're not worshiping no other God. You better make sure you're keeping the Sabbath. You know? And that's why right now, you got to thank y'all about Shemel Shai for leaving us under grace. Because we we, we we trying to get it right, but we can't get it 100% correct. So that's where the grace is going to kick in for us. But the scriptures say, hey, do you got faith? Uh, have it before the most high. Whatever, however you dealing in this word, y'all about Shemel Shai. Remember, it's between you and y'all about Shemel Shai, man. You're not, you're not keeping your faith for no other man out there. Your faith is for yourself and for Yahweh Shemel Shai. And of course you love the brotherhood. But it said, happy is the man that condemneth not himself in the things which he allow. Everything you allow in your life, things you allow in your daily, in your daily. You want to make sure whatever it is, it's not condemning you. Is it tearing up your conscience, whatever you're allowing? If it's tearing up your conscience, you got to, you got to put it away. You got to do something different, figure it out until you find the balance with it. You know, because each individual brother, we have different strengths. We have different tolerances. So we can handle things that certain brethren can handle things that other brethren can't handle. Brothers handle things different, but nonetheless, blessed is the man that condemneth not himself. You don't want to be chewing yourself out because you're allowing something. So you got to show that discipline, that temperance. Verse 2, I mean, Sirach 14 Sirach 14 and 2 says, Blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. All right? So you want to make sure whatever you're doing, you know, it ain't you ain't getting to the point where you condemn your own self because you're being wicked or you're being overly lustful. You're not showing no balance. You're not, you're not, you're not getting on top of your own self. You're not correcting yourself. Because as I as you see, this this picture I have here is it's the new me. It's the new you. The new you is fighting against lust. It's becoming a new man. It's dealing different this time. You know? And, and everybody sees it. You know? Now this verse 16 back in that Romans 7. It says, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So sin dwelleth in us. That's why we read the first verse. The opening verse was prepare your soul for temptation. Because sin is there. You got to be ready to fight. It says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For it is present. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So it's always good. It's always good around but there's always bad around at the same time. And sometimes you're not going to choose the right thing. Sometimes you are going to be lustful. But that's why the scripture talk about examining yourself. You see where you fell at? Or you see where you was just a little bit too lustful at? You go back and clean it up. It says, for the, it says, for the good that I would do, I'm sorry, for the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil that I would not do, that I do. And it made me think of this scripture right here, Timothy 4 and 7. I have fought the good fight of faith. faith. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So, it's a fight. You got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to go. You're going to be dealing with these things in your mind. You're going to be dealing with it all in your mind. But you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to continue to, 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 to swing at those demons. Not let those demons overcome you. Pray to the Lord and within... And with Yahba Shemel Shai, man, you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be strong too, man. Because if you could conquer these demons, it's all it's doing is making your spirit stronger. And if your spirit is stronger, um, your whole body becomes stronger. You walk around with more confidence. You know? You're more to yourself. You're more in the spirit, period. Jumping back to Romans 7 and 20, it says, Now if I do that what I would not that I would not. It is more, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present. When Paul said, when he's getting ready to do good, evil is present. 
You have to understand in your everyday life, everything you ready, everything you try to do that's good, evil will gonna be present there. So you gotta be on your P's and Q's. All right. It says, for I delight in the law of the heavenly father after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So in your mind, you're warring. You're going to constantly be warring in your, in your head. You know? That's why you got to arm yourself with the mind of Yahweh Shai. It made me think of this scripture, Sirach 33 and 14. It says, good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So Paul said that in his mind, he has a war. He has a war in his members of good and evil. And we just read in Sirach that good is set against evil and life against death. The godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So you are a sinner and you're a godly man at the same time. If that even makes sense. You do sin, but at the same time, um, you have Yah Bashmael Shai. So within your own mind, that's a platform of a war. In your mind, it's a war. And who are you going to let win the war? The spirit of Abashimel Shai or your lust and your appetites? That's a question for yourself. Verse 24 in Romans 7, it says, O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of this death? I thank you, our Shai Hamashiach, our Lord. So then... With the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So, that war that's going on within your mind, you serving the Lord, but you know that your flesh is serving your sin. And that's the war, that's the lust that, you, that, that you're dealing with. And that's the, the fight that you have to fight. Always pray, fast if your lusts are that strong. Believe in the righteousness. Keep your faith. Always want to do that which is good. And war against those lusts. Fight against those lusts. Be balanced with whatever you're allowing in your life. You know? And remember the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord driveth for away sins as it is written. So yeah, through the spirit and power of Yabba Shemal Shai, man. I'm going to um, give all praise to Yabba Shemal Shai. I hope that was edifying to whatever brother may need it that. Especially to the brother, uh, only the sheep 144. But um, hope you was edified. Y'all brought your mouth shy. Brought a thumb. I kept step. Shalom.